Riesling, uh, as most white wines, gains its elegance by the long vegetation season and not a hot, short uh, growing time. And uh, subsequently, we have got the model country, climatic wise, to grow these refined, versatile and sometimes fragile white wines. Apart from that, we grow grapes on uh, slate stone, Devonian slate stone. That is a stone that was created uh, some 500 million years ago. It's not a grown rock, but a sedimented rock. It was created under huge tropical sea. For millions of years, the sea mud has been pressed to ground. And when the landscape was built, as we know today, the shift of the continent, some of these layers were brought up, came to surface and created the Renanian Slate Mountains. And um, it is very easy for the plants to penetrate the terroir, the soil, and take out nutrition. Yeah? And that is very mineral driven. So we have coolish climate, warmish but coolish climate. We have got uh, slate stone, uh, the terroir, and that ends up in a, in, with, with a low pH level in the wine. And as we have got uh, the long vegetation season, all Rieslings, and that is something really special with the Riesling from Germany, are driven by tartaric acid. The longer the grapes ripen on the wine, the more delicate and the higher the finesse in the acidity. And uh, so Riesling is something that is seen from the backbone taste and my duty as a wine grower is to produce wines taste around that dry lingering finish. That is the secret of Riesling production. And particularly in the United States, uh, people like acid, subsequently Mosels are so much distributed in this country. The, the other reason why we are successful in producing Riesling in Germany is that a kind of German character is precision. And if you want to make a top Riesling wine, you have to do it with precision. It's not the art, other than other grape varieties, some other grape varieties, to make a blend. Invite a flying winemaker with his special cellar recipes, take a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, mix it, and then you have a nice brand. No, it is precision. Show back the fruit on a given spot, picked at a certain time, back into the bottle. That is the Riesling story. And that's what we try to do. Cheap Riesling can be simple and sweet, but there's cheap wine everywhere, which has no higher criteria to, to match or to fulfill. So, uh, but the great Riesling wines, of course, they have got residual sweetness, but, uh, but they also can be bone dry. Rieslings have an un uncounted number of faces. They can go from bone dry to super sweet and everything in between, every step is possible. But what makes it so special is that the sugar that might be in that particular bottle shows on the tongue and on palate in a quite a different way. It is as if you were to bite in a fresh fruit, in an apple, pear, apricot, peach. When you eat that kind of fruit, you never speak of sweetness of that fruit. You just speak how refreshing that fruit is because it is balanced by acid. The same occurs to Riesling. We have uh, initially on the lips, on the tongue, we have some amount of sugar that might be in a lower or in a higher percentage, but it's always balanced against backbone acid. So the wine never tastes sweet, the good Riesling wine, but fruity. And that is terribly important. And that is so important, particularly in the food process, as it helps um, to reanimate your taste buds, to cleanse or to rinse your mouth. It works like a sorbet and it helps to digest. Riesling is the ideal food wine per se.